Now, Churchill called it his black dog, the depression that was a frequent and unwanted visitor in his life. But in a pre-24-7 news media, social media world, mental health issues could easily be masked. Not today. Indeed, it's just been announced that Chile's Conservative presidential candidate, Pablo Luanguera, is withdrawing from the race on account of his depression. Why is it that we expect our politicians to be from a kind of super breed where the choice seems to be you either conceal mental illness or resign from public life? Well, with me is the Conservative MP for Croydon, Gavin Barwell, who repealed a bill banning people uh, with serious mental health issues being British politicians, company directors or serving on juries. Also, Dr Fahana Mann, a specialist registrar in adult psychiatry and in our Manchester studios, Dr Ashley Weinberg, author and editor of The Psychology of Politicians and a senior lecturer in psychology at the University of Salford. And let me come to you first. Um, why were you so interested to study the mental health and the psychology of politicians? That's a very interesting question. Um, I think primarily because I'm quite nosy, um, but secondly, as a psychologist, I'm very interested in decisions that people make. My particular area of interest is psychology of the workplace. Very little research has been done on the psychology of politicians, particularly around their mental health. And I always wondered, well, if we don't know enough about the psychological health of politicians or what causes pressure for them, can we be sure they're making the best decisions which obviously affect all of us. Um, and so that kind of led me to do more research in that particular area. And Ashley, what sort of conclusions did you come to? Well, surprise, surprise. Um, and uh, I, I hope in the studio there's some agreement. Politicians are definitely human. Like everybody else, they suffer the same kind of pressures and strains. And so we would be, well, certainly going about things the wrong way if we ignored the human side of the pressure they experience and if we didn't put in place mechanisms to support people doing very challenging jobs and being a national politician, whatever we may think uh, about some of the policies, it's still a very challenging job. Uh, Gavin, you introduced this legislation or supported this legislation that would allow people with various mental health problems to stay in public life. Um, what is the taboo? Is, it that, is there still a taboo that people feel very reluctant to talk about ongoing mental health problems because you know it's one thing if you've got a broken leg it's fine if you've got heart problems it's fine but if they think you've got mental health problems they think oh well, he's a loony he mustn't you know I, I think there's a problem in society at large there's, there's very compelling research that shows that large numbers of people that have mental health problems don't tell their family some of them don't seek medical advice don't tell their employer so I think there is a lot of stigma attached to mental health I think we are making some progress when I actually introduced my bill three members of parliament in the debate that we had actually spoke very honestly and openly about their own conditions and and I was very pleased with the public reaction in the media and their own constituents when they had the courage to do that so I think we are making progress but I think there is still stigma I had cancer when I was a child and at that time I think there was a taboo around cancer and that I think has changed over a number of years and we need to see the same kind of change in relation to mental health yeah and and do you think it is particularly so of politics where I mean if you look at the language of politics you know you're you're weak 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 I mean there's a sort of a lot of kind of stuff that you know almost implies sort of weakness and mental weakness as well. I think politicians are always going to be particularly wary about how their constituents will will react to these things. But there, yeah, there are examples. I, I think if you take Norway, um, uh, Prime Minister Bondovic there uh, in the in the early 2000s actually took some time off for a few weeks. He was suffering from depression and then actually got re-elected as Prime Minister. So I think the evidence is there that actually if you're honest and candid uh, about your health, there's not going to necessarily be a public reaction against that. And I think the tide is changing, but it clearly is going to take some time. Dr. Hanuman, do you, do, you, do you agree with that? Are you finding that, uh, you know, one of the problems that you have is getting people to admit that there is a problem? Absolutely, I couldn't agree more, actually. And I think uh, the more people in positions like yours do start standing up and talking about mental health problems and importantly recovery from mental health problems and leading a fulfilling life whether that's in work or family relationships etc is absolutely essential in in practice we often struggle getting people to get to the gp first of all and then get referred on to us if that's what they need and once they're there and the help is available then people often do very well but it's that initial point that we do often struggle with and and what where where is that is it just the the the, the individual recognizing in themselves that they have a problem or is it that society doesn't like to recognize the problem and you go to your your general practitioner and they say you, you just need a few tablets and you'll be fine mm, i think the short answer is all of the above yeah. uh, you can't remove the individual from the society that they're in 
and therefore the individual's own understanding of what mental illness is, how appropriate it is to reach for, out for help, whether the help exists or not, is very much influenced by what the wider views of society are. So I think it's, it's all of those things together. I just want to talk about a different aspect of this, Gavin, as well. Do you think there is something in the life of politicians that almost induces a sort of form of mental illness. It's a very capricious lifestyle. You're on your own, you're facing re-election, you're at the whim of the voters, whether they want you or they reject you. There are all sorts of insecurities associated with the life of a politician that I can understand that could drive some people to get up in the morning and are unable to look at themselves in the mirror because they feel such shame and low self-esteem and others who kind of become narcissistic, godlike characters who think, I know the answer to everything. There is a happy medium to be struck between those two, but I, I think that politics is a tough job, but I think lots of other people do very tough jobs as well. Um, I was struck when I was doing my research for the bill with, uh, with, with the, the reading I did, which suggested that if you went back 30 or 40 years ago, lots of us did work that was physically dangerous. Uh, but now, actually, the, the World Health Organization is predicting that by 2030, depression will be the most common medical condition, that many people are leading increasingly stressful lives. So, yes, I agree, John, politics is a stressful, difficult job. But I think we, as MPs, mustn't imagine that our jobs are uniquely stressful um, compared with what many other people do. Fahana, and he's not going to say that because he doesn't want to sound self-pitying. But do you think there is? But do you think there is something in that sort of cocktail of ingredients about being a politician that probably induces kind of you know either narcissism or kind of total self-doubt? I think the, the important thing, I think that the fact that certain professions are linked with people perhaps being more at risk of common mental illnesses is, is true. We've certainly from the second survey of psychiatric morbidity found that certain positions, especially if you're at high demand, high expectations, dealing with people every day, can put you under pressure of common mental illnesses. I don't think it's necessarily peculiar to people in politics, but certainly if you don't have the backup or the support around you and, and you're vulnerable, then high pressure can put you very much at risk. Ashley Weinberg, I know you'd, your research was to see whether politicians were human or not, but did you recognise something in there about the sort of the, the peculiar stresses and strains of a politician's life? I, I think just echoing what, what I've been listening to, yes, I, I think there are certain things that politicians have in common with other kind of jobs, and I agree with Gavin, not particularly different for politicians. Things like high workloads, low levels of control, and also things perhaps more that politicians and other kinds of jobs would experience, I know in the media as well, balancing work and home life. Um, one MP said to me, it's not a job, it's a way of life. So how do you cope with relationships, with family, um, and just trying to get away from work when you need to, when you're in that kind of situation that does make it difficult? We're just publishing a paper in a, an interesting journal called The Parliamentary Affairs, um, which suggests that low levels of control certainly do impact on MPs and really did have a negative impact after the expenses affair, sure. whether, whether MPs were named or not. Gavin, just very quickly answer that. No, I mean, that is one of the tough things, John. I'm very lucky that I represent the place where I live and where I grew up, but it does mean that I am never off duty. I can be out for a dinner, romantic dinner with my wife and someone will pull up a chair and sit down and join us and raise a problem they want me to take up. So you do never get away from your job, that's true. OK, we have to leave it there. I just want to ask uh, Dr Fahana Mann before you go, how were your stress levels getting into the studio? Because she arrived at the very <laughs> last second, having been stuck in traffic for ages before you got here. We thought you weren't going to make it. So stress levels subsiding now? How do you think I'm doing? I'm doing all right. I think you're doing fine. <laughs> Deep breathing is the way to go, I think. Deep breathing and relaxation. I thought I was going to be a psychiatrist there for a moment. She asked my advice and then she answered the question herself. All of you, thank you very much indeed for being with us. Thanks so much.